The European Central Bank has just had its monthly policy meeting, and while President Mario Draghi has announced no new measures this time, he has mounted a very strong defence of the ECB's policy in the face of some pretty fierce criticism. With me to discuss this is the FT's uh, Capital Markets Editor, Dan McCrum. Dan, he seems to be saying that, you know, that just give me time and it will work, this QE policy. Is he justified? Well, let's, how should we judge the European Central Bank and what they've done? In terms of markets, borrowing costs have come down a long way across the entire Eurozone. They were up a little bit immediately after the press conference, but nothing in terms of the grand context. So the ECB has made it much cheaper to borrow in Europe. Well done. They've also stabilised the financial system. So markets are a lot calmer than they would be without the effect of the ECB as well. And this time he didn't really produce any negative surprises. Back in December, the markets were disappointed with what he said. After this enormous announcement of a package of measures back in March, he seems to have at least got the confidence of markets that the ECB is the best game in town when it came, comes to helping the okay, Eurozone. But the crucial thing is about inflation. And as we see in our first chart, inflation has very low expectations. And Draghi was pretty downbeat about short-term prospects for inflation. Okay. This is the one where the question about the ECB is a little more difficult. So what we're looking at here are market-implied expectations for what inflation may be in the Eurozone over the next five years. And if you look at that, it has been going steadily down. There was a bit of a pick up, but as Mr Draghi said today in the meeting, deflation did appear in Europe earlier this year, and with falling energy prices, we may again see some more deflation in the Eurozone. So if we judge the job of the ECB to create inflation, then it's a bit of a mixed right. record at the moment. <laughs> Indeed. Now, uh, the, one of the biggest criticisms is about uh, negative interest rates. Draghi says that they are going to stay present or lower, but he was probably suggesting that it was that that's as far as they can go. It's a very complex issue, this. He admitted to this. Is there any sign that the ECB is going to in some way change that focus? I don't think there's going to be any change of tack. He said one of the big one of the big criticisms has been the effect of negative rates on the banks. Will that hit their profits and so make them lend less or charge more for lending? And he said no. The banks have been fine. There isn't evidence for negative rates having a bad impact so far. In fact, he said it was positive, the impact of negative rates. So that's okay. But again, the question is. What happens next? Where do we go from here? And he says we're going to have rates as negative or lower for the foreseeable future, effectively. OK, and one of the impacts that was meant to be happening from negative rates, as our second chart alludes to, is that we were meant to see the euro actually going up. This hasn't happened. The uh, euro going down, but this hasn't happened. The euro has increased. And, but that's not the whole story, Dan, is it? Well, the idea that you've heard from a lot of people in this talk about a currency war, and so the purpose of policy is to lower the value of the currency, which um, makes imports more expensive, which, produce, which boosts industry, but also uh, helps inflation along. Now, when you look at it in terms of the euro versus the dollar, as you can see here, um, the euro has come down quite a long way since uh, the quantitative easing was introduced at the start of 2015. But then if we look at the euro in terms of its main trade partners, so the trade weighted index for the euro, when you look at that, the euro hasn't actually weakened that much. So in terms of the dollar, we have seen some strengthening of, um, again, strengthening of the euro against the dollar in recent weeks. And that could perhaps continue, but I don't think that should perhaps be the yardstick by which we are judging the success or failure of what Mr Draghi is trying to do. We should just carry on sticking with the ECB. There is no alternative. Well, there really is no alternative, you're right. Dan, thanks very much.